Hi everyone, this is Grégoire aka Greg from Paris, France, uh, bringing you this time the, the English version of uh, the review about the Cotswolds signature single malt and adding a review of the uh, bourbon cask, cask strength single malt and also giving you a hint about the gene the main one they have they have five four six i don't remember now uh different kind of uh, variations of this gene uh, and i will uh present you a bit the distillery and then uh, have a taste of the two whiskies uh, but why i'm putting the gin on the table first off because it's one of the top five i uh, gins i ever tried this is a beautiful uh, gin uh, and because tomorrow there is uh, uh, the first ever uh, gin show in paris and yes i'm interested in uh, uh, other spirits than whiskey as you might have noticed before and that you will notice uh, soon as well because i will do be doing a uh, kind of a gin uh, rundown overview uh, and where I w in which I will uh, the video in which I will tell you about my favorite gins and why and maybe a live show about other spirits including gin with guests I'm working on it talking about guests good transition Greg <laughs> uh, these whiskies today are capped by uh, with uh, whiskey shared coins why because uh, one of the whiskies this one the purchase of it was inspired uh, by the tasting of a sample we swap samples with uh, Toby from whiskey shared and other people and um, uh, one of my favorite uh, of uh, the flight he sent was the bourbon cask and so i i looked uh, i wait a bit and when i found an interesting offer i bought it um, and uh, also the other reason is that next week next weekend if things work well we will normally go live together in some kind of pre-birthday live we did some uh, one day i will put a link uh birth double birthday live show because our birthdays are quite close one to the other uh, each uh, year it's funny uh, so uh, I, w I wouldn't be available in video uh, for my birthday on november 10 uh, to record anything because i will be uh, out um, in my family <coughs> sorry but meanwhile and sorry also for the sound I, I couldn't change the mic yet it will be probably for after the live now uh, I need to uh, order another one and I can't right now um, so what I wanted to say yeah we will we'll, uh, share our uh, ideas impressions about uh whiskies not this one because i uh i chose to do specific uh, video separate video about those two uh and yeah the these ones were available also at whiskey life paris that's also why i'm doing this video and there will be others later on about uh, other whiskies i tried at whiskey life paris um, right uh, now it's time for a short presentation of the distillery but I will still uh, give you some visuals um, right this is the bottle uh, they call it signature uh, at the distillery and uh, in uh, La Maison du Whisky's website, so that's why I'm using the name, but it's not written on, on the label, uh, and, and there's no confusion because it's it's a black uh, sub-label and a white, uh, cream, a bit creamy white uh, main label, and there's no other entry level uh, whiskey at Cotswold, so I hope things are clear. Uh, so the distillery quick presentation was established in 2014, uh, created by founded by uh, a person who was initially in investment banking Daniel Zor uh, to people called Dan uh, his uh, 
speaking fully in French, which is cool, uh, by the way. That's how we uh, talked at Whiskey Life Barry again uh, this year. Um, about, uh, yeah, the foundation of the distillery uh, was helped as many new projects in the world uh, by two people, the main being uh, Jim Swan, the famous whiskey maker who worked on a lot of distillery, uh, distilleries, uh, just a few to name Cavalan, Penderin, uh, Kilhoman, uh, Spirit of Yorkshire, who makes the Fyle Bay, who also uses STR casks. Spoke about them in my Whiskey Live uh, Paris and other shows report. Uh, not report because there's no pictures, but uh, overview uh, I did in the previous videos. Uh, also help M A M and H milk and X milk and honey called M H now from Israel, uh, and also Henry Cock Harry sorry Cockburn from Belmore Distillery also helped uh, Daniel build uh, his distillery or more precisely built a signature uh, style and using specific cask types for his first single malt. This re uh, has a half ton Mashton. Uh, they have eight wash bags of stainless steel made. Uh, they have four steels, two ha um, being a wash steels of 2,400 liters. And the temperatures uh, and the, the ABV coming out of these is 24% and two spirit steels of uh, 1,600 liters capacity. Uh, spirit coming out of this steel uh, when the cut is made at 75.5% ABV. A fermentation lasts four days, don't know if I've said it. They also have two Holstein, uh, which is some German pot steel. Uh, for gin and other spirits they do. Um, and most importantly, they use local barley, and for this one, it's Odyssey barley. They have also 100% of their barley floor malted, which is something uh, which is not so uh, common uh, nowadays. Most of distilleries using uh, mechanical uh, with salad and boxes, uh, some kind of industrial malting. Uh, of, of the barley so it's always good when you have something that's local uh, and uh, yeah did I say was established in the name <laughs> where that's on the label Cotswolds in the countryside of England where uh, when Daniel moved from the USA he uh, he went to London also to work and then he wanted to read to have something to uh, to uh, a nice house in the in, in nice countryside, and he selected uh, a place and a farm in uh, in the Cotswolds, so just under Birmingham, uh, from London to Birmingham, in, in that line. And he fell in love with the place, and he said, "Why not doing something I really want to do, and that's nothing to do with trade and banking?" And he is, and I love single malt. He said, "So I'm going to do a distillery." So uh, the first gin that they made came uh, in 2014. Um, and what's interesting uh, with this gin is uh, it's uh, non-chill filtered. It, it's made of wheat uh, spirit. It's, uh, what else? Yeah, I do sometimes some, <laughs> I, I need to have boxes where I am. So I do improvise some stuff like that, but it's not official at all. And I love to write on it the main things to know about uh, about the, 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 the bottles. So wheat spirit, unique botanicals, about 10 different, Holstein port steel. It's a dry gin. Um, number of bottles per batch, 7,800. Um, Non-chill filtered and only the heart of the distillation is kept. So it's really high quality, 46% did I say it? Uh, lots of awards this gin has. Uh, so yeah, you will see it in uh, in a video uh, overview about gins in general. And yes, it will be in the top five because it has become one of my favorites. Enough said. First whiskey, the Cotswold Distillery uh, release was in 2017. 
Um, did I spoke about the production? Yeah, uh, 125,000 liters of pure alcohol per year. And the uh, goal is to uh, achieve 500,000 sorry in a few years because the uh, distillery is currently uh, expanding its uh, production capacity by uh, building a new facility in a place called Storten. Um, so uh, what can I say else before we start? 2017 the first whiskey I had the chance to try it and to try the new make as well uh, Whiskey Life Paris 2016 or 17 uh, because there were a lot of things in advance presented there in Paris the new make I loved it, it was very fruity, estery, very interesting the single malt which was the previous version of this first batches if you if you prefer I struggled a bit with it it was a nice whiskey but for me it was a, a bit too much uh, influenced by the, uh, the wine casks but to be honest at that time as well I wasn't really prepared to enjoy wine cask as well and maybe the style change I did change uh, once I discovered uh, the work of uh, people like Emeric Roborel de Climas, who is a, an independent butler and refiner, as he calls himself, in France, and he does a tremendous job with uh, ex wine casks, which normally I don't like. Uh, whiskies uh, made with uh, those casks. Uh, also, meanwhile, I have the experience myself as a, a consultant blender for French distillery to use uh, also uh, wine cast. They were not STR, but they were, let's say, ST. <laughs> so let's get into that. This whiskey, uh, and yeah, before that, they used uh, the casks that are in the warehouses they have. I was told they're bourbon, sherry, STR, Madeira, Moscatel, rum, apple brandy. Pinot de Charente recently, which is a uh, Vendou Naturel, VDN, uh, an ex Isla cask, an ex Rye cask. So uh, they experiment with a lot of different casks. For the main core range, which consists in four, five, maybe almost six bottles, they play with mainly bourbon, sherry, STR casks. And one version is, uh, one expression is pitted and one is shared only so uh, what's interesting is they have but I will get to this soon if I have time they also have the inverted recipe of this and it's the uh, let me not mistake I hope yeah it's a reserve on the, it's almost the inverse. It's not exactly the same proportion. The, the reserve uh, Cotswold single malt, 50% ABV, has 20% STR and 80% bourbon cask. And it was very interesting to try it at Whiskey Library, uh, where I tried all the range and two uh, limited releases. Uh, very interesting to see how the, both those two work, but differently. So what is STR cask be uh, before I forget and before I get into the tasting? Shaved, toasted and recharred. It's what the initials mean. Shaved, it means they will uh, scrap the used, obviously, cask. Or not, because it's American oak, by the way, forgot to mention. Scrap from uh, previous use or from new to uh, extract a bit the vanillin etc different substances that uh, are uh, in the uh, cask uh, so yeah american oak they will toast it so it's a light heating uh, of the cask they put that vertically not completely made or they just disjoint a bit the staves and there's a fire in the ground and it hits from inside the cask and then it gets his uh, uh, nice but moderate uh, normally extraction of the sugars the vanillin everything that's on the uh, inside the cask 
then there's a second treatment uh, and yeah I forgot so at first it's uh, apologies first it's a new oak American oak then there is some wine added in there for uh, more or less long maturation the wine comes initially at a crossroads from Portugal but it's possible they use other red wine I don't have the info uh, more recently but it's always red wine and then they shave the cast like I explained and then they toast it and then and they rechar it what is recharring then this time normally the cask is on the horizontal size uh, and uh, they uh, heat it a lot with some special device uh, you know it's almost like an, an enormous lighter uh, we can say that uh, and of course the char uh, the barrels are uh, uh, they are submerged with water uh, every now and then to uh, avoid uh, the uh, burning but they are deep, more or less deeply. There are six levels, if I'm not mistaken, of charring uh, commonly used. Number four is quite high, uh, and lots of carbonization, and the worst or the best, according to people's opinion, and the strongest is the alligator char. Uh, so probably number six or five, which is uh, which is that they're getting some squares of of shapes because it's it begins to crack so it's deeply a, a, a lot a lot of uh, a lot of carbonated a lot of uh, almost tar no it's not tar uh, so it's very smoky very oaky uh, smoky it's not from peat but there can be a lot of wood smoke from that and it in did influence uh, the, the taste right but we're not in heavily toast. I don't know the the, the char. We, I don't know the level of the char. Sorry to be a bit approximative there. But I like always, if I don't know things, I state it. Uh, and if I mistake, I correct it under the video. So that's about it. So for this expression, I hope it's clear. Uh, this is 70% uh, str casks. So X red wine and 30% first fill X bourbon casks. Right. What else? I think we have enough of infos. This uh, bottle is from 2019. Bottles on January. Sorry, and this it was distilled in 2015 with Odyssey barley. It's non-chill filtered, non-colored, and as it's a bit transparent there and we know it's a batch of 6,000 bottles so you have everything you need there's a nice leaflet here I'm not saying uh, particularly uh, crazy things except um, yeah grain made from grain to glass right here so showcasing the uh, terroir thing a bit um, yeah, fermentation for uh, days, distilled twice, did I say that? Um, copper pot steel, yeah, it's the same I said there also, you have their tasting notes. Um, that's uh, about it, the Cotswold Distilling Company Limited, it's, uh, and it's, yeah, it's also in Storton, right. Witchford Road, Storton, Shipston on Tower. Oh my God! What is this? Oh yeah, and it's a postal code. Right. Uh, behind you have also the explanation that on our leaflet, and yeah, showcases the the fauna which is there. What's also cool? Let me show you quickly. Yeah, a uh, lots of words. Um, there's you have the cottage. So I hope the camera is not too blurry. Uh, we respect our beautiful surroundings, so there's something with. Uh, also, yeah, the uh, the whole uh, our steel edge is turned into biogas and solar energy helps power our distillery. So it's a, quite a green one. 
Then you have the cask they use, so first field bourbon barrel from Kentucky, wine barracks, so you have the info now from France and Portugal and sherry casks when it's used for, from Spain. Uh, and they, they only use once their barrels, that's important, forgot to mention. First and only distillery within the Cotswold area. What else? Uh, yeah, floor malting. Our oh, barley is melted for us by hand in Britain's oldest floor malting, just south of us in, uh, in Warminster. It's Wilts. Then we mill it ourselves at the distillery. And then you see local barley and floor hand floor malting. Then you see also, uh, and yeah, I hope it, I guess it's four sides still, right? As always, almost always. So we have two of the stills there. Quite nice packaging and solid cardboard. And we're gonna jump into the tasting now. I think I, I, I was not planning of speaking so much. Sorry. So viscosity, I don't know if you see it, and it's quite some viscosity, it doesn't last super long, but it's quite sticky on the on the glass. Everything's natural there, so color is, I would say, kind of honey, uh, light, it's, it's gold. A uh, year, it's between three to four years old. And uh, let's get to the nose. So we have immediately the STR effect, of course, which is a rounding thing, uh, presenting you the spirit as a, uh, yeah, I forgot to say, yeah, something I didn't knew. Uh, they will uh, mature the spirit in those different barrels, first field bourbon and STR. They will mix them together, but. Uh, but then before that they will disgorge er every barrel uh, and then uh, they will uh, vat them again for three months altogether. So it's kind of a marriage before uh, bottling. So yeah, uh, I didn't talk about price um, because it's something I often forget, apologies. Uh, this I had on an interesting offer uh, online uh, in France for 47 and uh, a few cents euros, but La Maison du Whisky sell it, for instance, for 62 euros, so probably more expensive than in the UK, as I understand it. Um, and uh, what else? Well, it's something you can find, I think, uh, at some retailers, not all, and in special as one. The nose, what I like, uh, it's it's kind of between autumnal and Christmas, Christmassy profile, right? So when I uh, smell this and drink this, I'm thinking of something green, the leaves, the autumn leaves, colorful autumn leaves on the ground. I'm thinking of Christmas spices. Uh, with uh, the vin chaud, the, the warm vision in uh, Belgian language, if I'm not mistaken, sorry, uh, Meno. Um, so hot wine, uh, spiced, hot spiced wine, milled wine, I think it's said uh, for Christmas that you have in, in uh, food and, uh, and wine and chocolate, uh, little uh, marketplaces in, uh, in the streets in some uh, places of Europe and elsewhere, I guess, too. So this is something very warming, very uh, inviting. And I have uh, also, uh, and I forgot again, pain de piece. Um, Christmas cake, I, I guess. I have some honey. I have some nice floral notes. I have um, the sweet spices, some say baking spices. Uh, I could say because it's a bit different Christmas spices here. So we have cinnamon, um, cloves and nutmeg, but we also have some a bit of star anise uh, or aniseed. Uh, 
though it's very noticeable here uh, to be honest uh, we have some nice fruit fresh and uh, um, baked uh, some peach ap apricot and of course candied orange uh, spice wise I also have some angelica and five berries poivre cinq ba five berries pepper so quite a complex and uh, mel beautiful melted and for me what stands out and what i was really happy to find when i got uh, recovered from the sea world uh, covid uh, it was the um, orange marmalade uh, Dan told me it was Seville orange marbling to be more precise uh, but not on the nose we'll, on, we'll see on the palate but not something uh, coming across bitter on the nose already if we can pick bitterness on the nose we can pick sugar on the nose so yeah quite appealing quite melted so quite nice but I think the best thing <laughs> I'm getting thirsty is to have it on the palate so cheers because it's an English whiskey and there's a boom in English uh, whiskey now with a lot of new distilleries I tried uh, Spirit of Yorkshire uh, Filler Bay I, I hope to try others soon uh, but for now this is Cotswold's time Mm. this is exactly what I said on the nose um, maybe slightly more slightly oaky now but uh, a tamed oak <coughs> excuse me um, yeah so quite pleasant despite it's str driven mainly what is really cool there is i still can feel the first field bourbon the nice esters that brings some of those floral and fruity notes partly and that's the way you still have some uh, you have marmalade compote fruit but you have also some fresh orchid fruit ones and what is really cool is that still comes across as something fresh sometimes when I drink this I'm thinking of Irish pot still but it doesn't have all the um, points of reference of, of it but it has definitely the orange in common I love how the orange note comes across and it's not so often in whiskies um, then in in scotch it tends this orange note to to uh, to go with uh, leads to more uh, earl grey and bergamot tea orange than fresh orange except maybe in orchid house from a uh, compass box but uh, the, the most orangey uh, scotch whiskies are often linked closely uh, more to peach than to apricot in my experience and I will quote the most beautiful expressions of Indy or the Nadura range of Glenlivet but also uh, of course Glenlossy is one of the distilleries that showcases the most the peach apricot orange uh, thing and then of course we go to cognac but when not so far from cognac this by the way but we're not here to speak about cognac slightly hint of ginger uh, but you will see that this will be more prominent in the bourbon cask one spoiler but there's also something very unique in this whiskey that I don't find every uh, anywhere else it's that subtle switch from malted barley to something that could be another spirit and a festive spirit for uh, these uh, these times now we are in now hope it makes sense another sip and then i will try it with water this is no statement but honestly 
uh, as for many new distilleries I absolutely don't care if there's no age statement as long as it's well made well crafted and helps the distillery to to have always some stock because sometimes it's going to be a three sometimes four maybe a, a lot of three years old cask and a bit of four or five and more this is the way it goes for new distilleries so why ask for something they will uh, with the age statement if it's five for instance years old what if they don't have enough five years old cask so they're not gonna release it what if they have let's say 70 80 percent of four years old cask and only a bit of five years old cask left would you say it's less good than a five year old age statement i don't think so ne usually so one has to be a bit m have some more suppleness for judging whiskies with no age statement especially from new distilleries is my opinion so with a few drops I didn't say if the finish was long, the finish is long. It's almost a bit longer with the water. There's a bit more herbal tone and tea. There's a lot of tea in there, I forgot to say. Coming across, of course, Earl Grey. Um, hint of black tea as well. I love how the apricot orange uh, and the apples behind are really leading the, the show once again and the sweet spice is uh, uh, making it more um, structural uh, structuring this more this is beautiful uh, honestly I think it, they're now at their peak for core range and that is really 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 nice uh, on another day I noticed more apples uh, and um, uh, vari about variety of apples I will say the golden one I don't know if the same in UK or US I'm sorry it's a golden pom golden pom is apple in French and the red apples as well for me overall delicious whiskey that's all I can say rating um, 88 out of 100 so for such a young whiskey I think it's a real great score rating there you have it we're gonna move now and I'm gonna use two series of notes one for samples which are often shorter as we can see Toby Field whiskey shared <laughs> uh, I still have something interesting to try uh, two in fact on the paper from from uh, Toby and the big uh, regular um, tasting shit um, for bottles so well, I had a slight offer on the other one. I uh, was a bit disappointed for this one about the price in France. Uh, through, again, the big shop, La Maison. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I know you're doing a great job in France to provide us the best whiskies, blah, blah, blah. But again, prices are, and it has increased. Uh, by the time I bought this in uh, April, late April, it was sold here for 84 and 90 cents uh, and now it's 88 euros at La Maison. Uh, and you know how I bought it? I bought it uh, on an online shop in Germany for 64.9 cents. Uh, 64 euros and 90 cents in Germany I was shocked by the difference of price uh, as often unfortunately and uh, so where it goes so this one is uh, but was bottled in uh, December uh, 8th of December in 2021 uh, I also tried other batches so if I don't say anything it's because I tried other batches and they are good as well so that 
when I will see uh, while reviewing the whiskey a big difference between uh, several batches I tried I will say so you so you know that you might try before you buy even more you always should but uh, sometimes you can't for this time it says bourbon cask uh, first fill American oak uh, and it says full cast strength natural color non chill filter as the other one all all one and uh, for this one is less than 2500 uh, bottles per batch ABV is 59.1 uh, what else do they say here yeah it's I don't like to read the um, tasting notes before uh, trying it um, let's see if the leaflet says something else should have checked that before Okay. Yeah, it, oh, I didn't say it, but it's local barley as well. And it's batch 21.1. .1 if it's no, it's not. It's B 21.1.0894. But it says of uh, here uh, the bottle date is here. I don't see. Uh, you might not see it. Doesn't focus so much. Packaging is gorgeous, like I said, um, or I didn't say gorgeous, but now I say it. It's clearly defined what version is when you uh, see the the label that's uh, a bit down and the upper one. Uh, so it's uh, these are easy to identify, I think. Um, so we'll review this, and if I have time, I will quickly say a word about the other versions I tried at Whiskey Life Paris otherwise head over please to the uh, big uh, overview of the shows I recently made right for, so for this one I have almost a similar note yeah I could use this one is this more complex is a bit more uh, we'll see but the best is to go into it and again thanks for uh, thanks to Toby for making me discover this beautiful whiskey as well and I hope I will be able to release this not necessarily on Sunday because I will be out but maybe then ne the next Monday coming in uh, legs so we have 59.1 so higher ABV means usually uh, more sticky legs. These are very tiny legs uh, and uh, the tears are coming down, they're dripping uh, nicely. It sticks to the glass, I don't know if you see it. It's always difficult. Color is obviously, uh, it's, I think it's a four years old this time. Uh, colors lighter obviously there's no str cask in the 100 percent first field bourbon so it's like straw yellow there's two different experiences first one is that you necessarily on first nose got uh, get a lot of alcohol but if you you're careful you you go this and this not sting too long, not to burn your nose, you will get and will water even more uh, the uh, secondary and tertiary notes. So behind the alcohol and, uh, and, and the oak, you will notice something tiny, but it's really one of the, the, the beautiful things in this whiskey, the beautiful notes is that custard, creme anglaise in French, beautiful note uh, that's showcased there and uh, with everything estuary not everything I don't get pears uh, I get apples but I get also coconut and vanilla and of course some spices the ginger uh, first coming in but yeah this is the most seducting thing is that custard note which is gorgeous and 
right behind it a very surprising and that should not be there but it comes from the distillate in my opinion the tiny red fruit combo that's behind it on second or third ground for me now on the ballot cheers Why do I chew it like you chew wine? Of course, you have to do it less, less longer because it's more alcohol. Because it helps oxygen the whiskey and also extracts some aromas you could not have. <coughs> Sorry, otherwise. Extract, I mean, explode in your palate. And this is the way I see the vanilla, the cocoa coconut and the um, English cream the, the custard that's wrapping almost everything and that is that is beautiful among this there's a tiny note coming in trying to to to, um, to come across more among the, the the custard note but it's staying at the second ground but it's there for me it's the marzipan or something between almond paste and uh, almond cream we call the frangipane here and then uh, you have in the, uh, right after christmas we we have the galette des rois you know the the pie with the, uh, with the almond paste uh, and it's a traditional here um, spices wise i have more this tiny Christmas uh, Christmas spices uh, mixed combo, but the ginger dominates. But it's not aggressive, it's not sour, and it's not even bitter. So that's quite a nice one. I hope I didn't mistake the delivery I'm waiting for. Um, yeah, and on the other side, I'm saying exactly the same, in fact. Right. Okay, let's see if the score changes. And last sip before I put some water. So yeah, of course, the structure is strong on the oak and it dominates, but there's enough complexity. I won't um, advise this to a newcomer to whiskey. I will advise him uh, or her the other one the signature but for people interesting interested to see a full bourbon maturation this is the one for you i will also advise people to uh, add a few drops uh, of this of, of wa water i use mineral water that's not too much uh, tainted with uh, distinctive uh, aromas by the way of course this is a quick dilution nothing to do with what they do so uh, maybe a little more so it will be a different result that some could expect uh, with taking a lot of time but we're not in professional dilution we're in tasting level quick tasting level video youtubing uh, style otherwise I know it's different doesn't change a lot of things on the nose still a lot of oak coming in but uh, more slightly floral elements and and the custard and the coconut uh, s comes across but the vanilla of course is behind all this hmm nice the spice is on growing it's logical more ginger a bit of pepper as well different kinds of pepper and the according to the time i try this it changes a bit 
I have less custard this one this time on uh, with diluted dilution diluting it um, but uh, it's still interesting I have a subjective note I uh, I include in the in my rating 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it's the I have nine criterias and the ninth one is the pleasure to drink pleasure of the experience it's you know 20 points inside of 10 points for the other and these all are uh, giving the final rate out of 100 that's different from other reviewers with time after around 4000 uh, tasting notes uh, and it's too late now to change uh, i mean except for special quick reviews i wanted to, to withdraw this subjective notes uh, as it influences it often heightens the note compared to other reviewers but uh, at the end of the day it's it's also about pleasure right so um if it influences on good on bad uh, 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 main score main rating uh, well let's keep it like that and even if I'm not completely satisfied and I go up to 100 out of 100 by the way not all do so that might explain that some notes can come across high this one I rated it 87 and I will not really change it uh, or maybe maybe lower it a bit uh, because uh, balance can be a struggle when you open it up uh, but still remains a very nice whiskey and 87 is a very decent score anything over 81 83 is decent and 87 getting close to 90 is is, is uh, is a very good score um, especially uh, once again for such a young whiskey oh, better this time so I will stick to 87 even if I regret uh, uh, coming back from the slightly bitter uh, okay note at the end That's why I have an idea, but I won't disclose it here because it might lead to something you you don't know, and that's in my mind currently. Uh, it's not a spoiler, really, but uh, we'll see how things go. Right before I leave you, and again, it's a long video. Uh, I will put timestamps. I also tried the reserve, which is 20% estir, 80% bourbon, and uh, hot, see, it's beautiful, it's rich, it works quite a, quite well, I, I liked it, it's about all 50% ABV. I also tried 100% uh, estir casks, which is the called the founder's choice, and it's at, uh, I think, I believe at cast strength. Let me double check that quickly. Um, Founders Choice, yeah, it's it was a 2002 distillation at 59.1, uh, very nice, and the wine surprisingly didn't come across as aggressive or uh, killing the distillate. So well done, Dan. I also tried the sherry cask, which is uh, five to seven years old, which mixes. Uh, Oh, does it have still some... not sure. It has some bourbon in there, but... It says Hawkshead, Oloroso and uh, Bat, or uh, Oloroso Bat, and PX Sherry as well. 57.4, it's just called the Sherry Cask. It's very good, very fruity. Also tried the Pitted, that's finished in uh, the Freud Quarter Casks, finished or entirely matured, I'm not sure. Uh, Lef Ex Lefroy quarter cask, three years old, 46%. Beautiful, working well. Also tried a small badge, uh, which is a special collection showcasing uh, local uh, English, anyway, painters. It's called the Golden World, uh, 52.5 ABV. 
uh, using uh, 65 percent i think uh, str and then bourbon and pitted casks nice as well uh, it's la maison de whisky exclusive surprise is come on guys 135 it's too much <sighs> okay uh, they also had something I preferred, though it was virgin oak, and usually I'm not a fan of virgin oak. 55% uh, ABV, five years old. Cuvée cavistes, so it's uh, it's mean um, cuvée means harvest, but it also means a selection, special selection of uh, either vintage or either a special uh, event or something. So there's a number or a. a, a some qualification word after the name cuvee so caviste means retailer so it's something specific to france exclusive to france single cask i'm looking forward to maybe get this one very nice not super oaky very warm chocolatey whiskey very nice so that's about it i uh, hope it was interesting and not too long for you and uh, See you very soon for more tastings and tasting live with a friend. Bye-bye.